Capriccio, Ciusso, Delicatezza, Decrescendo, Dolce, Doppio, Espressione. Hello again, and welcome back to episode 4 of Will's Wise Words. I'm Sensei Will, Zoom Sensation, Influencer, Astronomer, 11th Dan. You join me today in my thinking chair where many wise words are born. Now I'd like to start off by congratulating my guy Joe Wicks on his world record for having nearly 1 million people tune into his YouTube live stream. Neil's weekday workout came in close in second place and me, well I'm still working on it. How many times do I have to tell you? It's supposed to be about karate. Ah, uh, okay, so, sorry, yeah, okay, okay. On to the words. So, today, I'd like to talk about kata. Today, I'd like to get a bit more technical and talk about kata. Kata is a Japanese word meaning form. And form is exactly what we're trying to improve upon when we're practicing and performing our katas. But Sensei Will, what exactly is form? What do you mean? Excellent question, Will, with a red hat and an Adidas t-shirt on. When we talk about form, we're referring to the refinement and the development of your body mechanics. If you execute a kata correctly, that means your body is moving correctly. If your body is moving correct, like it should be doing in all your katas, you're able to practice generating more power in all your techniques. Most of your power comes from your core and your hips. And that is exactly what we're engaging when we're practicing our katas, not your arms and legs. All of this allows you to enhance the fundamentals of karate. Speed, precision and explosiveness. Boom! Now, of course, being very wise, it'd be good if I could help you to understand how you should be practicing your katas. A lot of people find that, yes, they can learn it, but how should they practice it? How should they continue to learn and continue to perfect their kata? Well, I'm going to give you some advice. And that first piece of advice is relax. Take your time. to direct a film about karate. Ugh. No, seriously, relax. The more relaxed you are, the more powerful your punches and strikes will be, the faster you'll be able to block out. Now, when I say relax, I don't mean light some candles and run yourself a bubble bath. Don't do counters in the bath. What I do mean is don't be tensed up. Don't start all tense like this and go drop down and then five or punch and block, punch the other way because you're just going to lose all your power. You've got to start nice and relaxed before tensing up firmly before impact. Okay, and then as soon as you've punched out nice and tense or blocked out nice and tense, you relax again, ready to do that next move. If you ever try to walk while all tensed up, you'll probably walk a bit like this and look like a robot, okay? You're relaxed in your everyday life. So when you do your katas, do the same thing. Relax and then tense on those punches and blocks. My next chunk of wisdom is that you should take little bits out of your kata and work on those first in order to put it all together and end up with the perfect kata. Most people, when they're trying to learn a new kata, they just try and learn it as soon as possible, as quickly as possible. And that can make learning frustrating and annoying. 
A lot of katas are very difficult. They can have over 30 moves. Therefore, it's a lot to remember. So for me, I find it's best to take out maybe the eight count sections that we do in class or even smaller bits just to work on those, really perfect them before putting them together at the end and having a nice fluid kata. Otherwise, all you do is rush through it. You'll make mistakes. You will forget bits. And then you do all the start really well, but the end just isn't quite as good. And finally, filming yourself or performing in front of a mirror. Obviously, it's great for us instructors to watch you and give feedback, but it's equally as important for you to critique yourself to see what you're doing well and what you're doing not so well. If you can identify those mistakes yourself, that means you'll be more able in the future to correct yourself before any mistakes become muscle memory. So it'll be really beneficial in your future learning. Not only that, but you'll be able to watch your stances and really make use of that kind of external view on a stance because it's very difficult to tell whether or not you're doing your stances right when you're actually performing your own kata. Now for some serious wisdom. There are of course places you can and should practice your kata for a start in the dojo. However, if you can't make it to the dojo as we cannot at the moment, then of course you can practice at home if you have the space, you could practice in the garden, or even if it conforms with the current set of health and safety rules and regulations enforced by the government in the park. Of course, there are places you should maybe not practice your kata. No, seriously, don't. I'm a professional. In the shower. <coughs> ah! In the car.